Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Williams. Do you feel that our nation is headed in the wrong direction? Do you feel that somehow we have lost our way? We have forgotten the things that made America great. We have forgotten the principles upon which this nation was founded. At Parkway Assembly of God, we believe it's time to return to the Bible, the real founding document of this nation. We believe that Jesus Christ is the answer and the only hope for America. This Sunday will be the red horse, the red horse. You can hear the hoofbeats right now. You cannot deny that you can hear the hoofbeats right now. The apocalypse means the unveiling, the unveiling, the revelation of the end. And uh, let's read together. Revelations chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set their own to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse, and him that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see that you hurt not the oil and the wine." And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with a sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. The white horse is the Antichrist. As we said last week, he is the son of Satan. He is called the lawless one. He is the deceiver, a living devil. He promises world peace, but plunges the world into war. He has a mark. And every person who takes the mark will lose their soul. And if you don't take the mark, you're in danger of having your head cut off. Then there's the red horse who will take peace from the earth. The black horse, the horse of famine, fighting. Did you see this week? Can't pass this up. Did you see? I don't know if you saw it in Venezuela. The shelves on the stores are totally empty. The people are rioting and the military has taken over distributing the food. That's what it's going to be like all over the world. People are there saying, we haven't eaten in two days. We need food. There's nothing in the stores and the military is giving out the food. The black horse 
And then there's the pale horse. Green. Why do we say green? Because the Greek word is chloris. It's a word in Mark 6, 39. When Jesus tells them to sit down on the green grass, the word is chloris. The CIA fact book of 1999 says that the color of Islam is green. It's coincidental that Islam now controls one-fourth of the world. One-fourth of the world. Well, first, the red horse. The red horse will bring nuclear war. And I don't say this lightly. I say it as a warning to the America and to the world. The treaty that we've entered into with Iran guarantees that nuclear war is coming. I just want to say that again. It guarantees that nuclear war is coming. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 12 says, This shall be the plague that the Lord God will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouths. Wait a minute. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty graphic, isn't it? Pretty graphic. The flesh shall melt away. Can you picture this? An army of men, their flesh melts away, their eyes melt away, their tongues are gone while they're standing on their feet. In one one hundredth of a second. One one hundredth of a second. A hydrogen bomb will produce a hundred and fifty million degrees of heat, enough to totally incinerate everything. Within two and a half mile radius, everything is automatically atomized. Within an eight mile radius, everything is on fire. Can you imagine that? An eight mile radius, instantly everything is burning. Within a 35 mile radius, radiation is going to kill everything and everyone. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, says the day of the Lord is coming, in which the heaven, wait, wait a minute, what is it? The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Wait a minute. How do, the, how do the elements pass away? The air is burned up. And the great noise is when the atmosphere comes crashing in and it creates a tremendous noise of fire and burning. Every weapon that has ever been created has been used. The nuclear attack on Israel. You may remember Masada. Did you know they take Masada? Don't want to take time to tell you. It's, it's a mountain, uh, southern Israel, flat top. Herod built his... Ca There's a movie. Has anybody seen the movie? The Jews held out uh, for a couple of years on top of the mountain. The Romans actually built a... Uh, a, a, a walkway up to it and they all committed suicide. Israeli officers now, as part of their training, go to the top of Masada and there they take a pledge that there will never be another Masada. Israel will fight to the death. This is what Israel finds itself in. Uh, in Matthew 
uh, 24, 17, I believe I gave him that verse. He says, let him that's on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. There's only going to be a two or three minute warning. Something is going to happen. This has all the marks of a nuclear, nuclear warfare. It does. And how are we going to deal with that? Are we going to deal with it? You know, it says we've made a covenant with death and hell. Why did we do that? Why did we make a covenant with death and hell? Isaiah chapter 28 verse 15 says we have made a covenant with death and with hell. We are in agreement so that the overflowing scourge shall pass by, but it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hid ourselves. This is the epitome of lies and falsehoods. We have said it won't come near unto us, but I have a secret for you. God said, whatever you do to Israel going to be done to you, and it's coming to America, and nuclear war is on the horizon. Now you say, well, pastor, you're being very negative. No, I'm just giving you a warning. I'm giving you a warning from God. They have a culture of death. The is Islamists have a culture of death. You say, oh, no, they... What about the suicide bombings, 9-11, Orlando, San Bernardino, name it one after another. The suicide bombers, they come. And Israel and the U.S. has a culture of life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But you have loved death. They love death. I want to tell you. The Bible says, I will curse those who curse you. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. The, the guy wrote a book, the Ayatollah, the supreme religious leader of Iran. He wrote a great book. He released it two days after the treaty. It was entitled, not exactly, but the name of it in essence was how to Fool America and Destroy Israel. And it was a thick book. He didn't write it in two days. They were chanting the day after death to America, death to Israel was being chanted. I don't know if you saw the news last night. I was studying and praying over this and I went and I turned on the TV and it had a headline. Iran does fourth intercontinental ballistic missile test. Fourth. That's against the treaty. They can't do that. In less than a year, they have done four. Why? It's called Houdna. Thank goodness their missile blew up. It blew up. Intercontinental second missiles, why did we told them no, you can't have that? What did they say? Yes. And we gave in as we did on everything. Why did they need intercontinental ballistic missiles to reach the U.S.? They didn't need them to reach Israel, they need them for the U.S. What is an EMP? Select electromagnetic pulse, bomb. They can send one over so easy. It can be high, high up in the uh, atmosphere. It can come across North America. It can explode. It will send gamma rays everywhere. What does gamma rays do? It destroys electricity. It will destroy your computer. It will, your car won't start. You know what cars are computerized? You know, everything's computerized now. It will do away with the electric grid. 
your car won't start, your truck won't start, your TV is going to be gone, your radio is going to be gone, your refrigerator and your freezer is going to be gone, everything's going to be shut off, you're going to be back in the dark ages with no communication, and it's possible today. You know, the Bible says when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. Oh, we're saying we want peace. Sudden destruction. The Antichrist says by peace he will destroy many. Did you know we're down to pre-World War II levels? Pre-World War II levels on our military? Do you know our Navy is way back below pre-World War II levels? Do you know why the Japanese attacked us? The Japanese said we didn't think they had the will to fight and we thought their military was so low that we could hit them a crushing blow. They were wrong. But you know what? Our military is to the point where it is now questionable whether we can defend the homeland we certainly cannot police the world. We cannot fight on different continents. We're going to be lucky just to be able to defend our homeland. Oh, what about the mutual defense part of the treaty? You know what it includes? If anybody attacks Iran, the other members of the treaty should come in and defend them. Who's going to attack them? Who would attack Iran? Israel and the U.S. is going to be finding itself on the opposite side with Russia and China and Iran and all of these countries. And, it, and what would the $150 billion buy Iran? Buys them the latest anti-aircraft. They're sending weapons to Hamas. Uh, so you've seen the shiploads. They're building tunnels. Uh, they're spending all kinds of money. You see, I don't know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even be talking about this, but this is, this is what gets me. All of this money, all of this that we're doing, we're isolating Israel. We're isolating Israel. Did you know God, I promise you this, God is going to do to America what we allow the terrorists to do to Israel. We say, oh, we're not getting involved. God's going to get you involved. And when you allow, I could tell you a long sermon about ways that it works, but God, God says, I will do to America what the terrorists are going to do to Israel. Charles Krautheimer, anybody know who he is? Says, here's a quote, it's midnight in America. Peggy Noonan, who is a columnist, I believe, for the Wall Street Journal, said across America, there is a sense that the wheels are coming off the trolley and the trolley is off the tracks. Omar Bradley, World War II general. Some of you may not remember him. He was famed general of World War II. He said, We have grasped the mystery of the Adam, but we have rejected the Sermon on the Mount. This is the truth. Matthew 24, 22 says, If those days should not be shortened, even the very elect should be lost. If they're not cut short, no flesh shall be saved. We have placed weapons in the hands of religious fanatics. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. He's in Babylon. Ezekiel 36, 24 through 26 says, I will bring Israel back. I will take them from the lands where they have been driven. I will bring them home. 
I will plant them in their land, and they shall not be moved. Oh, and Ezekiel 37, this is a summary. Ezekiel 37, the, the Holocaust is there, and there were horrible sights. I've been to Israel, and I've seen the Holocaust Museum several times. Becky says, I'm the last one out. They have to drag me out the museum. But it's amazing. You see the pictures. I wish I had time to describe it. But you can see the pictures. There's one where the Nazi guard is lining four women up so he can shoot them with one bullet. There's another one where the, the man is standing and you can see that he's standing on the front of a ditch and there's a huge ditch behind him that is full, filled with bones. And you know what, what strikes me? I look at that and I say, Ezekiel 37. He says, a valley of dry bones that are very dry and there is no hope and there's no chance for them. But he said, in that chapter, he says, this is the house of Israel. This is the house of Israel. And I will call them back. And they will stand upon their feet. And flesh will come upon them. I want to tell you, Israel has been called back. They have been restored as a nation. In 1948, none of this could have happened until Israel became a nation again, just like God said it. Amen. Just as He said it, it happened. The prophet said, Can a nation be born in a day? And he said, Yes. Out of the Holocaust came a great nation. Out of that valley of death, people came to life and Israel began to live. And they are beginning to bloom. I wish I could tell you, time doesn't permit. But we rode on the bus. We rode down the Jordan Valley. We rode down by the Syrian border. On one side, it's a desert. On the Israeli side, there are beautiful plants and crops oranges and bananas and pomegranates and all and apples right up there one side barren the other side a big apple orchard we actually took some of those apples we picked some they were delicious but you know what the bible says the desert will bloom once again the areas that were barren and dry are beginning to bloom and they're, they're, they're growing. They're growing and they're blooming. In Ezekiel 38, we have the, the lineup of the nations. We have Ezekiel 38 says that Russia, Rosh, R-O-S-H, Rosh. It says that Gog, he's a man. He's the ruler of the land of Magog. It says that they will line up. That Persia, who is Persia? Iran, 1935. They changed their name to Iran from Persia. They're not Arabs. They're very smart. Very smart. Ask John Kerry. He's found out. They're very smart. They speak Farsi. They, they, Iran hates Israel. They're looking for their Mahdi. They're looking for the Mahdi who's going to come. Who is the Mahdi? The Islamic Messiah. When does he come? In a time of world chaos. A time of world chaos. Uh-oh. Iran... Death and hell, nuclear weapons, world chaos, culture of death. That doesn't spell good news for America, does it? They're a culture of death, a Mahdi looking for world chaos. Libya, Ethiopia, Togomar, 
Turkey. Turkey had a coup this year. I mean this week, not this year, this week. They had a coup. I can't describe for you, but it was the last effort of the secular government to regain power from the Muslims, and it failed, and the Muslims are taking total control of Turkey. Where are all these nations coming from? They're, when are they going to come? In the latter days, after 1948, after Israel is reborn, in the last days. This could be right after the rapture of the church, or it could be just before the rapture. It's in that, in that sequence, in that time frame. It could be... Uh, it could be shortly thereafter. But, you know, here's the good thing. Sum it all up. God's in the sky. He's watching. And you know what he says? He says, my fury. I believe that's 3819, I believe. He says, my fury shall come up in my face. Oh, he says, my fury, my jealousy will come up in my face. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. There is no enemy coming. They may say, oh, well, we, we can't do anything about it. You know, they say that they're going to look to the West and they're going to say, What's going on? The West is going to say, have you come to take a spoil? We can't do anything about it because we just don't have the manpower and the will to do anything about it. But you shouldn't attack Israel. You know how they're coming? They're coming, the Islamists in Russia, they're coming to take a spoil. But you know what? God says... God says, five-sixths of all the armies are going to be destroyed. I'm going to rain down hail and I'm hail stones and fire and brimstones. There's going to be earthquakes. Uh, they're going to be destroyed. God's plan for Israel is mercy and God is going to... I can't summarize this quick enough. But you know, God says, it's right here in Ezekiel. He says, I'm going to destroy them. Why? Why is He going to do it? He says, so that they shall know that I am the Lord and I am the Holy One of Israel and I protect my people. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.